Welcome to the Teen Ticks Arts Podcast, also known as TAP, a Seattle-based youth podcast that focuses on empowering youth voices through the exploration of art. Here on this podcast, we share our favorite artistic influences. We explore their histories, cultural impacts, and how they resonate with young people today. We interview artists, from emerging teen artists to ones well-established in their careers. Today, we're talking about stickers. If you look around a city like Seattle, you'll notice that they're everywhere. Stickers can be slapped on basically anything that has a smooth surface, ranging from street signs and mailboxes to personal belongings like laptops, helmets, and water bottles. Because they're so common, they can be powerful outlets for artists and activists alike. But how did these stickers get to all of these places to begin with? What attracts artists to stickers, and more importantly, how and why can these stickers be so valuable to teen artists? Caden and another TAP teen, Blue, are going to be interviewing the Sticker Movie crew to learn about their personal connections with stickers after sharing our own, and their perspectives may help us unveil what bridges stickers across the decades. To start, let's look at the history of stickers. Why were stickers used in street art in the first place, and where did they come from? Sticker art originated in pretty large hubs for street art, which are like notably New York City and Philadelphia. And a quote that I think is pretty insightful from the blog Journey Forever Mag goes like this, and it's, Graffiti and its origins was used to publicly display the artistic expressions in response to the lack of access to museum and art institutions and the continuous strife, discrimination, and struggle of living in the city. And I think that's like largely where sticker art also gets its roots because like not only street art as a whole used to publicly display like artistic expressions but like sticker art is an even like more portable version it's smaller and it's faster because like it's it's literally you just peel it and stick it versus like having to like spray paint it or like wheat paste it which is like when you get like wheat paste paper and Um, I don't know how else to describe it, but I think it's, like, pretty cool that stickers just kind of naturally, like, made sense to come out of an already, like, established art form. And um, I guess it got even larger, got even more, it became more of its own, like, thing when like in the 90s like graffiti artists found 288 shipping labels and started to use them as canvases and 288 288 shipping labels are like um like free usps shipping labels that have really large canvases like if you think of like a name tag which is like i don't know like oof i remember that it's not a, <laughs> they don't always have the camera it's like two by three yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. like imagine that but like you turn it on its side and like be bigger and a little wider I so see. it's like a lot of space to draw on uh-huh. so graffiti artists like took advantage of that and um were able to like make stickers of their art and yeah you can actually go on the website and like order up to like i think 70 at a time for oh, free wow. so you should go do that <laughs> because it's the fastest way to like tag art like sticker artists will like always walk around with a stack of stickers in their pockets so like they could just like if they see a cool space, like a cool spot for them to put it, they like put it on. <laughs> I'm so, so sorry. No, I, I shouldn't be really sorry. <laughs> Leading off from that, where are people putting stickers? So stickers are a very valuable as well as socially acceptable medium of self-expression. People put them on water bottles, notebooks, laptops, and one particular place that I saw stickers that stuck with me was when I was walking the streets of Tokyo and I saw a lot of poles plastered with stickers, many of them overlapping as if, you know, like fighting for space. This form of putting up stickers in public spaces allows people to share their art, or in some cases acts as activism, with bold statements as well as inspiring messages. Yeah, I think it's a great time to share where Ashwari and I put our stickers, and um, I'm going to try describing it the best for people who are just listening, but if you want to go and check out the YouTube or Spotify, you could see the stickers because um, one of these stickers I got from Meow Wolf in 2022. And Meow Wolf is like um, this like interactive art exhibit. And it's really cool. Like a whole bunch of artists collaborated and worked on it together. And it's really cool. But I remember in the gift shop, like I really wanted to bring something home. There was actually like this larger like fridge backpack 
that I thought was really cool, but it was a school trip I couldn't bring back a backpack when I already had a bag and um also it was again a backpack it was Mm -hmm. not in my price range but it was really cool and I really wanted to have something to remember this like trip to Meow Wolf I had with like my friends and stuff so I got this sticker and it's this woman bicycling and I app is a pretty large sticker actually but I've had this on my computer since I got my computer and I think the colors like attract me to it yeah, it's so cute. It has, like, a lot of warm tones. Yeah, and I think, like, the woman looked so free and happy, and she got a, she got a cat in her basket, too. Aw, that's so cute. Yeah, so I think, like, at least, like, my connection with stickers is that they're really, like, nice to get as souvenirs because of their, like, format. Like, I could go to a whole bunch of places, and if I were to get a sticker from every single one of them, like, they're still going to be smaller than, like, a fridge backpack. Yeah. Like, I could probably fit, like, 100 or 200 stickers in a fridge backpack (laughs) and still have more room for stickers. So, like, I really like how I could just, like, collect them all, and um, I'll display them on my laptop. Right now, it's pretty empty because I'm waiting for some stickers to come in from the sticker movie, people. Uh, (laughs) That was such a bad thing to put onto my laptop, so I left it open. So speaking of souvenirs, as you can see also on my laptop, I have a lot of stickers. And these are actually stickers that my friend brought me as a souvenir from Korea. And I just thought they were really cute and they kind of fit the theme that I kind of wanted to put on my laptop. So a lot of them are like food stickers or like cute stickers. And um, I really hate, you know, like the sticky residue that's left when you like want to take off stickers. Apparently I don't. (laughs) So I bought a clear case off of amazon to put the stickers on so that i just like don't damage the laptop and another bonus for that is that i can change up the stickers anytime i want to now so they're so cute as you can see but i honestly put stickers on everything from water bottles to notebooks and i fluctuate between covering every inch of the object with stickers to you know like just like strategically putting one sticker on the surface you know the aesthetics. The aesthetics. <laughs> yep. This is like kind of like out of the blue, but talking about putting everything, stickers on everything, here's my personal journal, and it's got all these stickers on it, including my favorite ones, which is danger. No, 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 <laughs> because it's mine. It's mine. It's got my stickers. It's my notebook, and I think that's like another special thing about stickers. It's like, oh, I got to customize it. This is mine. Yeah. And I even got to show that I'm part of Teen Ticks' programs. It has Teen Ticks on there. So this is just like, um, I wasn't originally planning on sharing because like, well, I mean, kind of, kind of not, but. I mean, I'm glad you did. It's cute. <laughs> Thank you. So it's going to be back here. And I guess like a great like follow-up question that we're going to answer is like, how are we, like, not how. I guess, like, a great follow-up question. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that was really insightful. Thank you, Ashwari. Mm -hmm. And I think, like, a follow-up question that I want to answer is, like, what attracts us to stickers as teens? And, like, kind of how, like, I just described is that decorating everything, like, kind of makes me feel like this is mine because, like, Everything that, like, not everything, but there's, like, something kind of special about getting, like, a blank black planner or, like, a blank black journal and, like, just putting stickers on it, like, whatever interest you have at that time, like, you'll probably have stickers that, like, are from that interest and then you can, like, put them on and then you use the journal or, like, the diary or, like, the computer and then, like, maybe in, like, two months or something, you like, oh, I like this one more, oh, I'll just put a sticker next to this one because I still like this one but like I got a new interest Mm -hmm. and so it's like almost like over time like maybe like a year or so past then it becomes like a scrapbook of stickers because like it's just like you use it over time and stickers are kind of always there's always more stickers there's always more room to put stickers and I think that's what attracts me to stickers this the sentimental stuff (laughs) oh my god the sentimental stuff um but yeah Um, Ashwari, you mentioned that you had a clear case for a water bottle. So, like, I guess I wanted to ask... Water bottle? (laughs) (laughs) 
Yeah, but that's just my experience. Uh, I wanted to like go back to what you're talking about, like your clear laptop case. Why made you choose stickers over like pre-decorated cases? Because like I bet your friend could have brought back like a pre-decorated like MacBook case from Korea and just like it's pretty slim and give it to you. So why a clear case? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think stickers can really allow you to add some of your own personality into any ordinary objects and distinguish them from others, kind of like you were just saying. Like, there's going to be a whole bunch of people out there with the same case as you, but, you know, if you have a clear case, they're all going to be customizable with stickers. So it'll really set you apart and allow you to show your own personality. Another nice thing is that they're removable and usually aren't permanent, meaning up that like you can change them up whenever, like I mentioned before. Additionally, something that brought me to stickers in general is how they can merge both digital and physical arts. And this is because, as you know, most stickers are illustrated digitally, but they are on principle a very physical medium because you can, you know, take them and put them on wherever. Yeah, you bring up a really good point. Now, like I'm looking at all my stickers, I'm pretty sure all of them were digitally drawn and like printed out on vinyl or like kind of like paper stickers. Mm -hmm. So, wow. And I guess like the clear case would protect all that because like I have a couple of stickers that are like flaking off, but I'm yet to find a case for this one or maybe I'm just not looking hard enough I didn't <laughs> hear good enough reasons until today um yeah like I wanted to add about like add more to like stickers being removable like even though like they do leave the like sticky residue behind like don't be afraid to remove them like you could have like something protecting like the actual thing before you put on stickers like ashwari or you could be like me and like just put more stickers <laughs> over the residue and I think that's like why a lot of teenagers love it like not only is temporary art just cool in itself like kind of like appreciating it and knowing that it's like not going to be there forever so you're like oh my god I saw it before it before it like disappeared mm -hmm. but it's also just like being a young person comes with exploring identity and a temporary outlet for personal expression sounds really fitting and stickers are exactly that yeah and additionally I think likes and dislikes tend to shift a lot when you're a teen so it makes even more sense that the impermanence of sticker decoration is part of what makes them so important and popular for teens. Not only that, but stickers are usually very affordable, ranging from free to around even $6 for a vinyl one. Also, whoever has a sticker is kind of like becoming, you know, a canvas for the artist, which is really cool. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I've recently fallen down my own little rabbit hole of um, sticker art making. And, uh, like, the whole, like, accessible accessibility of it made it, like, really easy for me to just, like, dive into. Because I've already, like, had experience, like, collecting stickers and just, like, it, admiring stickers. I don't even know how else to say it. Admiring them. Mm -hmm. So, like, after um, an interview that you'll see at the end, like, later half the episode um i was actually uh talking with sharice smith and alicia parrot about like just getting into sticker art and i decided like oh i kind of want to try it and so i'm right now practicing i'm practicing at home but i've been using just like name tag things and just like a small sketchbook because um i haven't it's new, but I really am enjoying it. So, And I guess, like, beyond the joy I get from, like, collecting stickers and, like, just looking at stickers and, like, even trying to make stickers, it gives me hope when I see a fun or relatable sticker that just, like, complains about the weather or, like, a sticker that sheds awareness on current issues and, like, greater injustices. Like, seeing stickers stuck in random places reminds me how humans, humans are, if you, like, get what I mean. It's, like, it's almost like a natural instinct of ours to want to leave pieces of our identity and beliefs in places for others to see and connect with. And, like, especially, like, nowadays, like, um, when sometimes it's, like, everything's online, like, just being able to see, like, a sticker that's... Maybe I shouldn't bring up, like, political things right now. But, like, things that, like, talk on, like, very current issues. Like, you kind of feel solidarity. And you're like, I'm glad there's other people out there. And I... Yeah, that's, yeah. that's really <laughs> insightful and beautiful. And I agree. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I... Why am I saying thank you? Cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> and I guess it just, like, reminds me that's 
like humans thrive in communities and that gives me hope for myself as a teen right now like as Ashwari was saying before like and I guess what I was saying as well is like stickers are the perfect medium to just connect with other people like on a fundamental level like stickers are meant for other people to look at they're meant for other people to like share their personal identities with their chain like you could change them however you want like they're just perfect for like building community and they've got adhesive that like sticks to like everything smooth so I think that's an extra perk <laughs> And now we are going to be interviewing a few of the filmmakers behind the sticker movie. Cherise Smith, a passionate writer who is active in sticker art culture worldwide under the name Agent 5 Smith. Alicia Parrott, a graphic designer who creates street art and stickers under the name She Posse. And Tori Luking, a multimedia journalist based in New York City. They are all immensely creative and well-versed in the sticker culture, but do they love the same aspects of stickers that make them so appealing to teenagers? Let's find out. <laughs> Thank you again so much for like coming in well, on Zoom <laughs> to interview, to get interviewed. And um, yeah, I want to like start off this interview by having you guys introduce yourselves and maybe like some parts of like your roles in the sticker movie and some parts that you're like especially proud of maybe. I'll start. Um, I'm Charisse, aka Agent Five Smith, and I am one of the producers and writers of the film. I'm one of the co-creators, and I'm just proud to finish it. <laughs> I'm very proud that we were able to see this through. Um, it was a three going on four year process, and we still have some work to do. Um, but I'm very proud that we were able to get this film out, the first feature length film about stickers for our community, for sticker people, by sticker people, but really to be shared with the whole world. And I'll kick it to uh, Alicia Parrott. Thanks, Sharice. Yeah, so my name is Alicia Parrott, AKA uh, She Posse, so that's um, my street name. I'm a co-producer of the film and also a cast member. Um, and uh, so in the film, I actually spoke about nostalgia and being a younger sticker head. <laughs> uh, but what I'm most proud about the film is really um, how the community came together to, um, to really co-collaborate on telling this story. Um, so I'll kick it to Tori. Hi, thanks so much for having us. Um, I'm Tori Luking. I'm one of the co-producers and co-writers and assistant editor for the film. Uh, I think I'm most proud of, similar to what's been said already, just how the community showed up and submitted so much user-generated content for the film. Uh, and I'm also proud of our team for sifting through so many assets, so many um, video clips and photos and kind of um, distilling that down into the shots that we thought best conveyed the different scenes that we put together for the film. It was a large undertaking, so I'm proud of us for getting through it. Yeah, there were so many different components. I was wondering like how long it would have taken you guys. And I think Cherie mentioned earlier that it was like a year, like years long. And that was like, wow, I didn't realize it took so long but it kind of it like really makes sense because it's like such a big collaborative thing like you guys said and um i want to jump back to like alicia's um thing about like nostalgia um i actually wanted to ask a question around like your teenage years what's like a sticker that like has stuck with you pun intended <laughs> oh, wow actually it starts Prior to my teenage years, <laughs> my uh, sticker obsession started, I want to say about eight years old in the film that I, I'm, you know, I have a photo of myself trading stickers on my childhood bedroom floor with one of my best friends. Um, and so, you know, it was in the 80s. That's how old I am. But, um, you know, it's not one sticker that stands out. It's just the whole um, generation of stickers that came out during that time period, which are some of them are scratch and sniffs, 
Um, so that, you know, there are these little circle, because I know you're much younger than me, so I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but there were these little uh, just brown stickers and they eat, you'd literally scratch and sniff and, you know, they had pizza and grape and whatnot. Um, some other favorite stickers were puppy stickers. Uh, you know, I think it's the wide variety of mediums back then. Um, whereas nowadays, um, it's really pretty straight. Well, it's not really straightforward. There's, there's still various mediums, but that nostalgia piece, um, really is about what was popular back then, you know, um, but, and, and so, you know, what I love about uh, telling that story in the film is that here I am some decades later, um, revisiting that love of stickers um, and actually finding a community that uh, loves it just as much as I do uh, in, in my adult years. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, I do. I definitely, we still have scratch and sniffs. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Like I wasn't sure. Sniffs. I wasn't sure. I'm not, I'm not connected that much with the youth yet. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else want to share about their teenage their, years? Yeah, they're young or young, like younger than stickers. And yeah. do you have any? Oh my God. Sharice, I think Sharice might want to chime in. Ooh. <laughs> yes, please do. Please do. In my younger years, we didn't play with stickers. So I always loved them. But um, it wasn't until I got older that I realized that there was a whole culture of people that love stickers, traded stickers, made stickers. Um, that was not something I was involved in until later years. And so one of the beautiful things about this film is it brings the culture to people who are not aware of it. Um, I'm from Harlem, New York City. We are in Harlem right now. We didn't trade stickers uptown. This is not something we did. But um, now you have just so many other people involved. But, um, but yes. I always admired them, but I never had them. And I never had a personal connection until adulthood. Yeah, I think like, um, I also didn't really know how like sticker trading worked. And I really like liked how the sticker movie goes into depth about it and how there's also kind of like almost a you owe me, but not really owe. It's more like a, I send you this, you should send me this back. But it's not like a should, it's just like, it's just like you do. <laughs> And I thought like it was pretty cool, and I actually was like, "Hmm, I kind of want to do this too." But I, I need to figure out how to make stickers <laughs> on a larger scale. Yeah, and that's the beauty. Anybody could make stickers. Anybody. You, I mean, all you need is. Are you familiar with uh, labels that you get from the post office? The uh, party down labels. Hey, they're stickers. You could draw on them. Use, you know, a pencil. Use crayons. It, it really doesn't matter. I mean, that's the beauty of uh, the sticker community. And you know, we we share that in the film. You know, they can anybody can make them, and that we're from all walks of life. And you know, you mentioned trading. And once you get into this kooky little wonderful world, you kind of just learn those unspoken rules as you go. You know, um, which is, you know, and I only got into the adult sticker community uh, a few years ago. And, um, you know, it's amazing how, you know, my experience, this is not everybody's experience, but the community is very, very kind in kind of showing the way and, and um, you know, not, not like, oh, you have to do this, but hey, this is what we do. Um, you know, because you had mentioned like, oh, you know, is it like a hard rule? It's not a hard rule, you know, you're not going to be kicked out of the club. <laughs> It'd be pretty hard to get kicked out of like a whole worldwide community. It's like, where will you go into the same community? Yeah, I mean, I got you. If you want to trade, um, get permission, obviously. But if you have a PO box or something, I'll start you off. I started trading actually with not my own stickers. I just had a lot of stickers from trading other people's stickers and putting them up. And then people actually made a sticker for me and started doing collabs with my name on it. And I was like, okay, I'm not gonna turn this down. And then that just, that was just like, you know, down the rabbit hole I went. 
So I'm happy to send you both and uh, Kaden some stickers and set you off and then, you know, get permission. But I'll, but I'll set you off in your way. I'm sure she posse. She posse is the queen Plus of class one. right now. Plus we one. Got you. Absolutely. Yeah, we got you. We'll do your first. I love being people's first trades. I don't even realize. And they're like, you were my first trade. It's your fault. And I'm like, yes. Yeah. It's your but, fault. I mean, I, I got you. <laughs> yeah, that's down so the, sweet down the rabbit hole down the rabbit hole you go <laughs> yeah no that's so cool thank you thank you so much yeah um okay cool tori do you have anything to add like about your experiences sure um so i am uh, a sticker head by association of this project now three years deep um but i was not a member of the community prior to the project I'm a uh, trained journalist and a working journalist now, uh, but I got introduced to the culture through um, a friend of a friend who is involved and featured in the film, uh, and he exposed me to it, and that's how, through a variety of different avenues and paths, I got connected to the film, and so um, for me, I, it wasn't a part of my childhood or my teenage years, um, but it is very much a part of my adult life. And for the entire time that I lived in New York City, up until two weeks ago, I just moved uh, to Washington State. But um, up until that point, uh, it was a huge part of my time in New York and really informed how I saw the city and how I learned about the city and different parts of the city. And it became something that helped me better interpret my surroundings and uh, feel more a part of a community and a place that can feel really large. Um, so I really appreciated what the community provided me during my time there. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, I'm also kind of a sticker person by association with Kaden. <laughs> Kaden kind of dragged me, um, dragged me on this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyways, <laughs> but yeah, that's cool. Um, oh, whoops, wait. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you want to ask this one? I'll try to ask the one under, but I didn't know how to segue it in. Okay, it's fine, just say <laughs> it. What's your favorite, um, like, medium to work with? This is Torres Charisse and Alicia, Alicia, because <laughs> um, you mentioned that you guys both make stickers and have like street art names. Well, I, I read it on the website too, and I mm -hmm. thought it was pretty cool because the names are really cool. Can I take it off, Charisse? Favorite medium? Yeah. Um, I love me some 228, um, label 228, the postal labels. I love the, the fact that it's not a big canvas, that it's so small and there's different sizes, there's different kinds. There's like dozens of um, varieties. Some have blue tops, some of them have two blue, a top and a bottom. It's just, I just like using those specifically because the paper is good, but also um, just playing around with that classic 228. Um, you don't, all you need is a marker or a pencil and you're good to go. That's my favorite um, medium to use. But I would love to hear from She Posse because she's the artist artist. Okay, she does everything. So She Posse, let me know. I want to know too. What is your favorite medium? I'm curious. <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> I mean, everybody's an artist. But um, yeah, so to go a little bit backwards there, um, I'm a uh, graphic designer. That, that's how I pay my bills. I've been doing that for, it's scary to say, almost like 30 years now, uh, full time. Um, so my day job is creating. And, you know, I said in, a, in another um, interview that I'm pixel pushing all day and, and doing work, uh, you know, using my creative self for other people. Um, so doing, creating stickers and, um, we paste artwork. Um, when I first started doing stickers, I did it with what I was most comfortable with because I've been in the digital world for so long. So I created, um, you know, everything digitally. Um, and, um, you know, since then I got more comfortable going to my roots uh, and when I say my roots, I, I, you know, I went to art school in New York, 
Um, and I spent the first two years of art school figuring out what uh, direction I want to do at, you know, go with being a creative, um, you know, because I had the, you know, I don't know, the stereotype or the stigma, like I can't paint for a living. I can't pay my bills, you know, so I went into uh, graphic design. So to back up there um, during those years and in my childhood, you know, I, I painted, I, um, you know, I uh, did sculpture. So it's, it's really lately I've been doing more of that um, creating by hand and then taking that and making it digital and producing stickers that way. So um, to answer your question, I don't think I have a favorite medium, but it's more that I'm just going with the flow of wherever my vibe takes me at the moment. And so at the moment, it's, it's really so real. those like hand guns, but then bringing it into a digital world. <laughs> nice. That's cool. Um, oops. I was wondering like what your favorite part of like the medium of stickers um is like in terms of like the culture and like the creating of it because i heard like um i think you brought up like repasting like what like attracts you to like sticker as a like f way to share your art rather than like repasting or like posters or like graffiti like spray paint so we paste for me is just an extension of sticker art um because quite honestly um i wanted to make a bigger statement and get a really just a bigger rush of putting up honestly <laughs> um and through I, I mean really i got to repaste through sticker people uh because there is not every sticker person also does repaste but there is certainly an overlap um and so, um, gosh, I forget your question. <laughs> um, it's just like, what's your favorite part of like the medium of stickers? What's that? Right, right, right. What's my favorite part? I mean, honestly, it's, um, it's the community. You know, that's what keeps me doing this. Whereas, like I mentioned, you know, I've been an artist throughout my life, but I'll be doing it, you know, by myself, <laughs> for myself. And so uh, with the community, having that constant flux of seeing other people's work, you know, whether it's through sticker trades or going through Instagram, um, I, I'm constantly and purposely bombarded by other people's creativity. So that has just kept me motivated. And, you know, it's not, it, at, at this point, it's something that I feel like I get uh, itchy if I'm not creating for myself. Um, you That's know, a good not, not on a daily basis because I do I do get a little bit you know like okay I need to take a break from this, but I like that it's on my own time. Really, it's not on anybody else's time. Thank you for that answer. It's that was a really good description of like just like just like the need to make things, and I think that you bring up like an amazing point of just like scrolling through Instagram or looking like at other people's arts constantly definitely keeps people motivated. And um, just like to wrap up this interview, I have a question for all of you guys. And it's, if you could only say one thing to like teenagers across the nation or maybe even the globe, <laughs> what would it be like just like, actually, no, I don't want to limit it to one sentence. Yeah. Yeah. As, lo as long as you want to make it. <laughs> That's like like, a, like about, about, about stickers or just like in general? About stickers. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, general is also good, but like, yeah. I feel like that's like kind of jumping on them for an yeah. answer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think, you know, as someone who was introduced to this culture uh, through a journalism lens and a documentary lens, I can say that what I've learned and what I think is valuable to take away from this project and also the community of sticker artists is the fact that um, anything that is creative, that 
you may want to do or you may want to try, whether it's sticker art or wheat paste or graffiti or filmmaking or editing or graphic design, um, just because you've never done it before doesn't mean you can't start. And there's no age limit to when you can try something new. Um, at any age and at any point in life, you can decide that you want to be creative and take on something new and express yourself in different ways throughout your life. And I think that that is so beautiful and so important to our mental health and our mental well-being. And so I would just encourage everyone to, if you're interested and you like it and you see it, go for it, do it and reach out to other people that are doing it and learn from other people around you and see, see what happens. You never, ever know where something might take you. I never in a million years would have thought that one tiny little documentary short that I made in grad school would have led me down the path of a feature film that had premieres on both coasts and um, has interest and has, has had legs for the last three years. So I'm grateful I said yes. And that's my advice. Say yes and try it out. Nice. That is some very, very profound. Very profound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyone else want to share? We can end right there. But I will just say this. And um, I'm a mom. My kid is 17. And so I always tell him, trust yourself. Um, especially when you're a teenager, everyone has an idea of who you should be, what you should be doing, where you should go. And uh, this generation more than anyone, you, you guys are just so, you all are just so assured of who, like sure of who you are at this moment, or at least trying to be sure and embracing that and not trying to hide behind these labels, just being your genuine self. And so I would encourage teenagers, trust yourself. Like if there's something that you wanna do to speak to Tori's profound statement is like, if there's something you wanna do and you're not unsure, don't listen to that inner voice or the outer voices that say you can't do it. Trust yourself, trust your abilities, trust your intuition and who you are um, and go for it. Yeah, trust yourself, you know, don't listen to any, even that yourself, that, that inner saboteur, that voice that says you can't do things. You can do it and just, you know, stand in your greatness. Thank you so much for the, um, what is it? Motivation? Yeah. <laughs> encouragement, encouragement, encouragement. Because, oh my God, yeah. That that hit, I was like, oh my God, I really do need to trust myself. <laughs> and like on a more physical level, also when I am starting to learn how to drive, uh, <laughs> then when I turn, like I'm like, can I go, can I go, I should go. <laughs> I have to go, so I should trust myself and just go. But I guess like, yeah. yeah it's really a nice analogy. Oh yeah, cars. It just like <laughs> resonated a lot, and yeah, thank yeah. you for that. Yeah, this hike. I mean, these ladies said it so beautifully. Um, so I'll try to cap it with um, live uh, with curiosity. Um, you know, I, uh, although I'm older <laughs> now, um, I found through stickers particularly that it's brought up that childhood curiosity and wanting to know more and wanting to know more about people because I've, I've come across many people that I don't think I would have normally crossed paths with because it's global, um, because it's all walks of life. Um, I've learned about people through their art, uh, which is a beautiful thing because, you know, honestly, a, a lot of these people I'm meeting on Instagram and I think that's where, um, you know, you get some raw emotion in there because maybe it is because there's a mask. And um, and so I would say just live live with curiosity. Oh, I like that. Thank that was you. a great ending statement. Yeah. Okay. And I wanted to thank you guys again so, so much for coming in and being so patient, especially with all the like <laughs> mic and then um, forgetting to let you guys in. <laughs> so... Thank you so much, and yes. yeah, yeah. Thank you. It was nice to s nice to meet you guys. You guys have a great rest of your Sunday. Oh, thank, thank you for you. the opportunity. Thank you for having, you us. For having us. Y'all did amazing. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Thank you. you guys are so well spoken. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Thank you. Once again, thank you to Cherie Smith, Alicia Parrott, and Tori Luking for joining us. Make sure to check them out on Instagram at Sticker Movie to learn more. A special thanks to everyone behind the scenes who helped making 
who helped make this happen, especially the Vera Project for the recording space, Ground Zero Radio for their help in recording and producing TAP, and Totem Star recording artist Lily Indigo for the music you heard at the beginning of this episode. That's all we have for this episode. Join us next month when we talk about another artistic inspiration of one of the TAP members. Thank you.